Let's meet these two individuals. <coughs> They're called Don and John. Don is this type of guy that you might call patriarchal. Patriarchal. Well, John is very much egalitarian. He cares much less about hierarchies. Don is so patriarchal that you might define him easily as sexist, while John is matriarchal, feminist type of orientation. Don is violent. He appreciates weapons. He is surrounded with like-minded individuals, while John, on the other hand, is utterly, utterly nonviolent. Don is xenophobic. Xenophobic, so xenophobic that he's prone to genocide while John is accepting of differences, very much less xenophobic. Don is this type of guy that thinks that con sexuality should be kept under strict control, and especially female sexuality should be controlled. While, on the other hand, John is for free sexuality, everybody can love whoever he wants or she, and the promiscuity is perfectly okay, female or male, doesn't matter, this is the type of idea that John has about that issue. And you might say this is perfectly clear. These are two archetypes of political orientation in today's, today's modern society. Don is conservative, well, John is liberal, and this is clear. Well, think twice, because Don is a chimpanzee and John is a bonobo. These two types of primates are the closest genetic relatives to our species. There's only 2% of genetic difference between humans and chimps and humans and bonobos. This also means that we must share a lot of common genetic programs coming out from our common evolutionary history. Now, wait a minute. We are talking about ideologies. We are talking uh, about political orientations. Isn't it supposed to be connected with philosophy, logic, uh, ethical principles, isn't it supposed to be connected with this bulge that has grown here in the last hundreds and thousands of years? Uh, it's called the frontal cortex, something, something that has arrived to define our species as something remarkably different from the rest of living beings on this planet. Isn't it supposed to be connected with our higher cognitive functions? Well, according to the research, not so much, because it's connected with genes, it's connected with biology, it's connected with neuroanatomy, it's connected with instincts. Let's explore some of this data. Up to 40% of your political orientation is due to your genes. 40% of heritability of uh, political orientation has been found by the research. You might know this guy, his name is Colin Firth. Academy Award-winning actor, UK, known to be liberal. In one of the BBC radio shows, he launched this proposal, this provocation. He said, I will never be able to understand why I never understand conservatives, and they will never understand me. We, it seems like we have different brains, completely different brains. Is there somebody who can check this out? And actually, a group of neuroscientists from University College of London accepted this idea, and this challenge, and they've scanned the brain, the brains of conservatives and liberals. And what they have found is quite, rem you might imagine that at the beginning, nobody expected this research to yield any significant result. However, what they have found is quite remarkable. The more active and the bigger is your amygdala, the more likely you are to be conservative. This has to do, this amygdala has to do with threat detection, with fight versus fly behavior, with violence and protection from violence. And especially since it's very much connected with testosterone, it has to do with hierarchical behaviors and violence stemming out of hierarchies. And another thing, important thing, amygdala lights up when you see people coming from far away with different racial features. Amygdala lights up in order to signal threat. On the other hand, conservatives have bigger and more active anterior cingulate cortex, ACC. This ACC has to do with 
conflict management with interrupting learned patterns of behavior in accordance with expectations of rewards and punishments coming from social social environment. Okay, it's true. You can't say that these anatomic differences are causing ideological differences. It might be vice versa through neuroplasticity. It might be that something else is causing both of these phenomena. However, the findings of this research are quite, quite suggestive. Now, we mentioned genes, we mentioned neuroanatomy. Let's explore instincts. The instinct of disgust. The more you are prone to disgust, the more you're likely to be conservative. Now, let's split disgust in three subparts. There is so-called pathogen-related disgust, sexual behavior-related disgust, and moral disgust. And you will understand that there is a quite clear meaning, evolutionary meaning, of these instinctive programs. Pathogen-related disgust is our behavioral immune system. It's aimed to protect us from getting in contact with potential sources of harmful microbes. Microbes that might not be known to my immune system or to immune systems inside my community. Well, <coughs> this type of pathogens are brought or can be brought by people coming from far away. Sexual related disgust. It doesn't have to do only with sexually transmissible infections. It has to do with all these types of sexual behavior that is not strictly aimed at procreation. And at the end, the moral type of disgust, which is clearly, clearly connected with conservative type of thinking. So it has its meaning, its purpose. Well, it's also true that in today's society, most of these purposes are easily achieved by a simple antibiotic or by a condom. But however, let's explore a bit more about this evolutionary purpose. Conservatives, what is the advantage of being conservative or live or to live in a, uh, in a, in a community which is predominantly conservative? This advantage could be called as genetic advantage. This type of communities are based on fierce competition and by Using that competition, the genetic advantage is that are selected those genetical materials that can deal easily with environments poor of resources, lacking of resources. Being based on competition means that this type of community needs a violence reduction, reduction program, something that might control the violence, otherwise it will spiral out of control. And the type of mechanisms in this case is the strict respect of hierarchy and the monogamous mating choice. There are clear threats connected with this kind of uh, predominantly uh, uh, conservative type of uh, community. These threats are due to stress. The, uh, the competition leads to violence, leads to stress exposure, leads to cortisol exposure, which is the hormone of stress, and all this has clear adverse, neg uh, adverse um, uh, mental health and health consequences. And also that's due to uh, agonistic encounters among individuals, members of this community. Liberals, on the other hand, might have this, what we want to define as cultural advantage. Getting in contact between different uh, communities means cultural exchanges, means accumulating knowledge, uh, uh, cultural heritages in order to cope, to be prepared to cope better with different types of environment. This requires a relative abundance because it's ba is based on cooperation inside the community and between different communities is based on cooperation. Nevertheless, it requires also a violence reduction mechanism. In this case, this is completely different. It's almost as much as possible free access to sexuality and democratic access to sexuality which involves promiscuity, especially female promiscuity. And there are threats, there are also threats in this case and the threats are connected with invasions and are connected with infections and environmental adversities such as famine for instance. So we are talking about two completely different uh, 
behavioral programs with genetic basis that survived throughout eons of our evolutionary history and arrived up to our modern times because they have had important advantages and purposes, both of them. This advantage and purpose should be connected with fitting with the right environment. And we should be able, if this hypothesis is true, we should be able to recognize something like that on a map of the world. On this map, you will see one important feature. The darker is the country on this map, the more economically unequal it is. The lighter it is, the more economically egalitarian it is. This, this simple, important economic um, f uh, parameter has to do or is expected to be connected with importance of hierarchies. The more unequal, the more important the hierarchy. And it's also something that under this hypothesis would bring a more conservative type of orientation inside the given community. Let's check if this is true. The most unequal country, uh, uh, economically unequal country in the world is South Africa. South Africa, which, is, which also has highest level of violence uh, highest level of uh, violent crime, very high levels of rape, and still burning racial conflicts. All this is su supposedly brings to a very conservative type of predominant orientation inside the community. There's, there are patriarchal countries of South America. And there is one interesting e example, United States, which United States are the only rich country that is also uh, uh, with, with high levels of in inequality. Most of the countries are much more egalitarian, rich countries. And this brings United States to be much more conservative than similar countries, such as Canada, such as Australia, such as New Zealand, such as rich countries of European Union, and above every other is, are the Scandinavian countries as the most egalitarian countries. Another important analogy all these light-colored countries are the countries where the rights of sexual choice is guaranteed for men and women, where the egalitarian type of orientation brings sexual freedom to men and women at the same, at the same level. Okay, so we think about two types of programs genetically, uh, genetically predetermined that are making us better fitting inside two different types of environment. So next time, when you will be in front of the polling station, in front of a ballot box, think, do you live in a bonobo-like or in a chimp-like society? And after all, are you a chimp or a bonobo? <laughs>